Hey, it's Delay, and this is episode 205 of the Orange Pill Investor. And today I want to talk about what is the optimal capital efficiency for selling covered calls versus poor men's covered calls. And a hat tip to Hermes Lux, who posted about poor men's covered calls. And um, I thought it would, it would make a nice video. So let's get to it. Just taking a look at the buying requirement. If you don't buy the shares on margin, I don't even think it's close. So I'm not even going to compare paying full price for the shares. I've been paying 13 grand for 100 shares is not going to even remotely compete with the capital efficiency of the poor man's covered call. So I'm going to go ahead and discuss the uh, margin value. And everybody, every exchange could probably have different margin ratios, but instead of paying 13 grand for 100 shares, I would only have to pay 7,300. So if we take if we wanted to be super, super aggressive, which you could do if you own the shares, because um, there's no risk whatsoever. So you have to be more careful with the poor man's covered call. It has to be structured in a particular way to be safe and make sure that you are not uh, uncovered if MicroStrategy was to go to the moon. So if you can get 440 bucks... What percent return is that compared to the 7311 that you got to put up? So that's about 6%. So that's being pretty, pretty greedy selling at the money. Covered calls, there's no upside whatsoever. So I don't necessarily think that's the greatest way to go about it. Um, expecting MicroStrategy micro strategy to increase in value. So in general, what I've done with this premium is just buy long calls with it. Um, that's, that's how I capture unlimited upside is, is using this to purchase long calls uh, or shares and leave those shares uncovered either way works for me, you know, not financial advice, of course. So let's just see what it would cost to put together a poor man's covered call. Now, most people with poor man's covered calls will go out at least a year. Unfortunately, April 17th is only 228 days. So to get over a year, you got to go all the way out to December 2025. And I'm going to scroll down until Delta, uh, my Delta values are not filling it. Oh, I'm going the wrong damn way. That's probably, well, they're not filled in here either. That's annoying as crap. All right, so I might have to use Robinhood if they are available. This is going to make me laugh. I wonder if this is a problem with the market makers. Or just with Tasty Trade. If I go all the way down to $100 a share, let's see what the delta is for this. Okay, 0. 0.8. So that's actually perfect. This would be reasonable. So you can see that 6600 is just a little bit cheaper than buying the shares on margin for 7,300. So this is going to be a little bit more affordable, but we cannot sell at the money covered calls with this because the rule of thumb to set up a 
safe, quote unquote safe, covered call. I wanted to do this in just one week. You got to take the strike that you that you select. So I can't get much past 150. So if I tried to select this to click 50 bucks, take 150 minus the 100 strike, that's $50. That added to this should be more than the value of the long call. And that's not even close. I'd have to go all the way up to like 60. Yeah, there's, there's nothing here. So Portman's covered calls for selling weeklies would not really work unless I went way, way, way deeper in the money. And now it's costing me more. <laughs> So, if I wanted to just sell like the 145 strike, let's say the 140 strike, I think that's the one that Hermes even used, I would probably have to go all the way down to, it's not going to cut it either. Let's go to 75. One forty minus seventy five is sixty five, right? That's still not going to cut it. Let's go down to the sixty. See, and I'm already. I don't even have to continue because uh, one forty minus sixty is eighty. I'd have to get paid. Yeah, this is this is where you'd have to go, and this delta is point nine. So this is going to be much more expensive. Um, so this is already more expensive than just buying the shares on margin and just saying to hell with it. And then you don't have to worry about the rigmarole of structuring it accurately and guessing about whether you sold the 140 strike and the price goes to 200 and is the value of your long call going to go up enough to cover it. So to me, this is not worth it as a leaps. Now he was using one that was at the January. Now this one, I never hold long calls under 90 days. So I would only be able to sell against this for about five weeks before I'd be looking to un unload it. And the value is going to drop. I don't want to be too dramatic and say precipitously, but it's going to cost 4,600 now. And then in two months, that as long as MicroStrategy's price does not change, you're going to lose six hundred dollars from forty six hundred to four thousand. You're going to lose six hundred dollars over the course of two months anyway. So 600 divided by eight, You're losing $75 a week. So even though you can get, oops, let me go to the January. Yeah, so even even here, though, this is not going to work because you're not going to even be able to get. If you tried to sell the 140, 140 minus 100 is 40 bucks. This is only going to get you, this is almost gets it, but not quite. So let's go to 145. 145 minus 100 is $45 plus this. So this is this is what you can get right here. This is this this is is as aggressive and greedy as I would be comfortable doing on a selling weeklies. So this could get you a hundred bucks a week, but you're losing seventy five a week on the value of the long call. And owning shares has no theta. So theta is the Greek that tells you how much an option is going to be devaluing every day, and Shares just have one delta. 
and no theta. So, um, which brings me, I'll just say it now since it's on top of my head. The risk of owning a long call is the $600 that this is going to lose in eight weeks was, is going to be multiplied dramatically if the price of MicroStrategy were to collapse even 10%. The value of this option is going to collapse 20, 30%. It, it's leveraged to the upside, but it's also leveraged to the downside. And if MicroStrategy were to drop too close to this long call strike of 100 bucks, it might even, the delta might drop so low that it, it's no longer even valid for selling poor men's covered calls. Um, and that's exactly what happened. So this is a little bit of a cautionary tale as well. Let's just go all. So that's what happened when I was making money hand over fist because um, a guy I knew <laughs> told me to get into options and, um, you know, he was more of a momentum trader, but selling covered calls and, and puts basically running the wheel strategy, uh, appealed to me. So I made a bunch of money here. I like tripled my money in a year and a half. And then the fed raised interest rates. And instead of selling covered calls, you know, somewhere along here, I decided, oh, these poor men's covered calls. I wasn't trading on margin back then. I don't think, um, so instead of paying full price for these shares, I'm just going to pay half price for a long call and I'm making twice as much money. So I'm making a whole lot of money. I was mostly selling covered calls against Tesla. And so I tripled my money in like a year and a half. And then when the Fed raised interest rates, uh, Tesla collapsed. And since I didn't own Tesla shares, I couldn't continue to sell covered calls against those positions because they basically became worthless. So if I had a long call that was worth a hundred dollars, you know, basically 10 grand and the price of Tesla collapses, you know, 25%, then that 10 grand option became a five grand option. It collapsed double. And that's how I rode <laughs> all my profits down to here. So this is, this is all poor men's covered calls losses right here. Now, this is all poor men's covered calls gains. So this is, I, I, I'm saying this is probably all macro related. So not financial advice, but if you think that the Fed is going to cut rates and the stock market's going to go number go up, then poor men's covered calls might be a winner. But if the whole economy is going to go to hell in a handbasket, then poor men's covered calls will absolutely get destroyed. This account is living proof of that <laughs> in action. So the best case scenario for me, I think if I was going to try to trade one of these short dated options, so this is as cheap as you can get. So it's going to cost what, like eight grand for the deep in the money leaps, that's over 365 days. And there's not really a lot to collect here. I would probably go out to 45 days, 47 is as close. Generally, you would want to do this on Tuesdays if you want to hit 45 days exactly. This is Tasty Trades standard selling puts, selling covered calls, uh, DTE from the hundreds of videos that I've watched. And then in general, it's probably around the 80% chance of profit. 80% um, chance of being um, out of the money. So anywhere in here would probably be reasonable. Let's just do, um, let's just see if 155 works. Nice whole number. 155 minus 100 is 55 bucks. And then the value, 55, um, 46 plus 8 gets you to 54. So that's kind of close. 
Uh, 160 might be safer. 160 minus 100 is 60. And that's already much greater than this. So yeah, um, probably don't have to go that far. Wait, why was 150 so bad? 55. 155 minus 100 is 55. Oh, no, 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 that's all right. That's fine. That, oh, this, I can actually get way more aggressive than that. Sorry, I was thinking about this backwards. So 150 minus 100 is 50 bucks. And the $100 strike plus this has to be more than 50. So you could collect this. Let's see how absolutely greedy we can be with this at 145. 45 minus 100 is $45. Actually, that works too. One forty, forty plus twelve gets you there. Hmm. One thirty-five minus a hundred is thirty-five bucks. Thirty-five plus the fourteen collected gets you to forty-nine. So actually, you can be pretty, pretty aggressive with this. This is not at all what I was expecting. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, so for the poor men's covered calls, it looks like I can get I can even sell these. I wonder if the I wonder if the prices after hours changed. See, that's the other that's the other bad part about uh, making these videos on the weekend is this is not real time. Let's see what is on Tasty Trade here. That's pretty similar. Yeah, so one, so 40, 40 bucks plus the 12 is 52. That's more than the value. Actually, that, that makes sense. So I was kind of second guessing it a little bit, but this is using just the bargain basement uh cheapest long call so this is not technically a leaps it's not a year old so this is going to be super efficient on capital and is this is, am i going to be able to sell this at the money <laughs> so let's see 133 minus 100 is 33 dollars plus 15 is 48 technically this this would be fine. Now, I kind of don't like that because now this is an at the money call. Let's go 140. In general, when you're selling 45 DTE options, you're going to manage that trade every two to three weeks. So best case scenario, in two weeks, you'll be able to buy this back for $630 and then just roll it out and collect another 1200. So in that scenario, you're making 630, let's just say 600 to be conservative. You're making 600 every two weeks, so that's 300 a week. You're losing 75 a week. So you're making 225 profit. So 225 profit divided by 46. So we got 225 divided by 4,600. All right, so 4.8% return on your money, adjusting for the amount that the long call will depreciate per week. 
So that's pretty good. And then if I was going to sell this particular covered call, buying the shares. So again, I'm collecting 300 a week. But in this scenario, I don't have to subtract out the 75 because my shares are not going to depreciate. So I've got 300 a week divided by the 7,300. So 4.1%. I just don't see getting that extra 0.7% as being worth the risk of MicroStrategy you know, collapsing on the short term. If MicroStrategy goes to 100, this long call ain't worth shit. Let's just see what it would be worth approximately. So at, uh, was it January? Yeah. So, and at the money, you know, if this, <laughs> if this, Deep in the money, long call becomes an at the money call. It's going to be worth maybe three grand. So it's going to lose a third of its value. It's n and this is, this is a 0 0.6 delta. This is very highly, it's going to be highly unsuitable for selling covered calls against here. So this is an extra risk. Um, now, however, if the price of MicroStrategy goes up over the next month, then the price of this long call is going to appreciate considerably, way more than the shares will. So the upside is more limited with the shares than with this poor man's covered call. So I don't want to say this is all doom and gloom, but I do want to be very cautious um, about them. And... You know, at the end, I'll show the actual poor men's covered calls that I have constructed in my IRA. I couldn't afford. Well, I could. Um, but I'm not going to access that IRA money for a couple of decades. So it, it kind of just doesn't matter what happens to that account, really. Um, so. This poor man's covered call with an extremely kind of risky, short dated option to be extremely capital friendly can beat buying the shares on margin. So the risks for owning the shares is much less. There's upside risk, meaning you, you're, you're, gains are capped a little bit more but if i own 100 shares of microstrategy now granted if I'm, I'm i did discuss buying them on margin so you that's a risk as well so there's always a risk of getting a margin call if you are buying on margin and don't have enough buying power um so in that sense buying a call could be considered a little bit less risky because if you already paid for it, the worst that can happen is it goes to zero and you lose all of that money. Um, but buying things on margin, you end up with a margin call, you could actually end up owing money. So um, however, so I, I buy a hundred shares of MicroStrategy, price goes down to a hundred. My long call that I was selling covered calls against is now basically worthless. I could potentially roll out to like 60 days. Let's just figure it out. Let's just figure it the frick out. If I have an at the money call, and I want to set up a poor man's covered call against this right now. Whoops, not 47 days. I got to go out to January. So if I wanted to be, <laughs> if I got screwed, and let's say I, I bought a long call when MicroStrategy was at 170 or something, and now it's collapsed to 132. Would I still be able to sell covered calls against this position? Delta is only 0.62. This is going to be extremely risky. So let's see if I can even formulate a covered call. I'm going to go to 47 days to expiration. 
And if I select the, so the difference between the strikes plus the premium has to be greater than 30. So to get this much premium, I need a, I need 20. So that would bring me to 152. It's actually possible. So if I go to 152, that's $20 a share, 28. Oh, let's keep going a little bit. Let's go to 160. So 160 minus 132 is 28. 28 plus seven is 35. So that'll, that'll get us there. So anywhere between this 155, it's 23. Yeah, right here. This is about as aggressive as you could get. So this is actually not the end of the world. Uh, it is possible to create this in a somewhat safe manner. Um, and you can see here that um, as long as the price of MicroStrategy finishes anywhere under like... Well, it's only going to go up to like 165. Um, but let's see, you could collect $400 every two weeks. So that's 200 bucks a week. So you could still make pretty good premium based on this. Um, even after losing a third of this long calls value. But <laughs> if MicroStrategy falls farther than that, eventually this thing would be completely useless for selling covered calls against. So that's a risk that selling shares does not have. Some people will still bag hold like, but for me, let's say I sold, I bought a hundred shares at 13 grand and the price drops to a hundred. Some people would go out here and they'd just be super paranoid and they're like, oh, okay, I don't want to lose money. So, I'll sell the one, you know, I'll sell the 135 for 1400 bucks and that's completely fine. You can collect half of 700 a week, so like 350 a week. Um still not terrible. Actually, I'm sorry. No. If the price dropped to 100, I would probably be getting the premium that's like 172. Yeah, be collecting this. So maybe 120 a week. Which is still like 1%. It's not terrible. Um, but I, I, just, I just pretend like the current price is the price. <laughs> and I just keep selling covered calls. And if I wanted to sell covered calls at 140, but my purchase price was 160, I just take that 200 and I buy long calls or a couple shares or whatever with it. Uh, it's called bag holding when you're scared to sell covered calls because the price of your stock dropped. And I don't bag hold. Um, I think of it as not letting past mistakes prevent me from making future profits. But some people can't stomach the idea of ever taking a loss. So, you know, they'll buy in at 132 and if the price goes to 100, they'll just sit on their hands and maybe dollar cost average and wait for the price to come back up to their cost basis. And um, that's completely fine if that's, you know, the way that you have to trade in order to be able to sleep at night. But I assume all of my risk when I open a trade. I don't I don't really um worry about my risk when it's bad <laughs> after after the fact because then it's too late. Um so yeah, I think buying shares on margin is fairly equivalent to setting up these poor men's covered calls. Buying on margin has margin risk. So if the price collapses on you, you get a margin call. If you can't ante up some cash, you can get wrecked and be completely liquidated. So that is a uh, threat. That's a T in SWAT. <laughs> That's a big threat. Same thing is 
somewhat true for the long calls. Their values collapse when a when the underlying price collapses. The poor men's covered call also has that extra bit of complexity of am I selecting the right long call? Is it far enough into the future that I don't have theta risk? Let's just look at it because the one from the example that inspired this post was right here. Theta is 8.086. So this is how much this option is losing per day. But on the other example, the one that's all the way out past, you know, this is this is a good example of a leap. So this is over uh, 365 days. Theta is only 0 0.04. So only half of the value is draining out of this option than it is the close stated option. So while it's half the price, uh, two thirds of the price, twice as much value is draining out of it. It's probably why most people that I follow that sell poor man's covered calls will recommend using leaps. I am a little bit aggressive with mine sometimes as well. So let's just take a look um, and then I'll end this video. So in my IRA, in my IRA I have actually all three examples that were just discussed are set up. I have shares outright and I have three covered calls against these. I can do whatever the hell I want with these because they're completely covered. If someone exercises me on this, let's say the price of MicroStrategy goes to 200 and they exercise and they're like, like, bitch, give me your shares. I can just hand over the shares. Here, take them. Um, it would not be pleasant because <laughs> MicroStrategy would be worth 200 a share now and I would have missed out on all that upside. But as far as I know, that's a legit defined risk trade. Um, I also have an example of... Three, 100 strike long calls that I purchased. Well, I purchased them for 7,000. They're only worth 6,600 now. Um, but these are considered leaps because they're over 365 days. They're deep-ish in the money. Tasty Trade is being a bitch and not showing my the delta values for some reason on options. Um, I don't feel like logging out and logging back in. But I'm pretty sure, I think it was probably, I think it was 0.8. Perfectly fine. Um, and so against these, I sold these. These 160 strikes. The 160 minus the 100 is 60 bucks and 60 bucks plus the 600 that I sold is $66, which is fine, just barely fine right now. And so that's probably what my thought processes were. I think I rolled these on Friday. Yeah. They were about two weeks old. And so I took profits and, and, and rolled them back out again. So yeah, 600. I'm collecting about 150 a week on these, which is what, like two and a half percent or something. So that works. And then I didn't have quite enough money to buy another Leaps. So I bought this one that is not a Leaps. It's still a long call. I'm sorry, not that one. The one that's, yeah, 173 days. 
but it's the 100 strike. So this one is the point, I think this one's like 0.8 delta as well. Uh, doesn't really matter. It's, it's, it's fine, but it just requires a little bit more care. So this one I sold a 140 strike against. So 140 minus 100 is 40. And I just needed to collect enough premium here to make it, to make 40 plus 50, I'm sorry, plus 11, 51. And 51 is greater than the value of this long call. So this poor man's covered call is also relatively safe. If the value of, let's just see what's the delta on it. Let's see the delta on this one was 0 0.8. The delta on the 100, is it February? I think it was January. On the January one is only, eh, it's 0.79, so that's not too bad. So almost 80 cents on the dollar. If the price goes up 70 bucks times 0.8, it's going to be like $550 a share. So the value of this will go up about 5,000 a share. And that would make this worth about 9,600. And if you have to pay on some 140 strikes for next week and the price goes to uh, 200 a share, that's going to be 60. Yeah. So you're fine. The 50 plus the 45 is 9,500 and you'd owe like seven, 7,000, oh, sorry, 6,000 on this one. So it, you're covered. I mean, there's a, there's a point at which it would not be covered potentially, but I mean, I think even if MicroStrategy doubled in price, the poor man's covered calls that I constructed are fine. Uh, but let's look at the efficiency on this one. So I had to put up basically five grand in collateral and I'm collecting 1100, but I'm only collecting half of that every two weeks. So that's 550. So 275 a week. And if I was collecting 1% a week, that would be 50 bucks. So yeah, like 5% a week here. But I can only do this for another five months. Once this thing is under 90 days, I refuse. I start getting really anxious about holding any long calls. Um, all right. I think that's the end of this video. Uh, poor man's covered calls has a slight edge over margin. Uh, it has a big edge over paying, you know, in a cash account. But it does have a bunch of risks, big time downside risks. And... Um, On a margin account, I've just decided is just own the shares. I feel like I'm getting almost long call option prices. And I prefer the margin downside risk to the long call downside risk, <laughs> probably because of my history and having lost so much money with poor men's covered calls. But the same thing would be true if MicroStrategy crashes in this margin account. Um, I would definitely have to, in case of emergency, break glass and um, go rob some liquid assets to cover it. 
So it's the stock market. None of it is without risk, but um, I think poor man's covered calls is more capital efficient in a cash account. It's barely more capital efficient in a margin account. And um, so for that reason, if I was in a cash account, I probably would trade some poor men's covered calls, but not more than like 10%. If I was being really aggressive, maybe 20% of my account's value. Um, you can see in this IRA, because I, you know, like half of the value is probably in these poor men's covered calls. I don't know if that's actually true. So what do I have? I have three. Three of these, so that's seven grand times three, 21 grand. And 300 shares is 40. Yeah. So I have like 50%, I'm sorry, third, 30% of this account, this IRA is in poor men's covered calls. I think that's way too much risk for more pe for most people. Uh, 10, 20% 10 max, I think is probably not the end of the world. But um, yeah, it's definitely a valuable tool. I still use it, but it's not, <laughs> I'm not going to make it 80% or 100% of my portfolio uh, like I did when I got wrecked when the Fed raised interest rates. So I think that's the... Uh, that's the end of this one. Be good, y'all.